For anti-CTLA-4, they are more prominent and severe. Uh, they range from most uh, concerning uh, colitis or inflammation of the colon. Uh, that can be quite difficult to deal with, but if dealt with promptly with immune suppression is resolvable. The anti-PD-1 antibodies are milder in their toxicity range, but there can be some serious side effects that occasionally have caused death, such as pneumonitis, inflammation of the lung. The combination actually may have greater efficacy, it's been shown to do that in melanoma, but that comes seemingly at the price of higher toxicity. But no new toxicity, just more severe, more frequent events that have been described for individual agents. There's no hard data to indicate management of toxicity with immune suppression impairs efficacy. Uh, and if patients are treated, uh, are monitored carefully, are encouraged to report symptoms early, if they're dealt with early with uh, uh, quite heavy duty immunosuppression in some cases, then those lesions, those uh, uh, complications can be dealt with promptly and resolved. I think the most uh, significant advances will be made in combinations of other checkpoint inhibitors with the current ones, but also what I alluded to earlier, helping to stimulate the patient's own immune system. Often the most primitive part of it, the innate immune system, because that's what primes the immune response and keeps it going. And that can actually be done, funnily enough, by conventional anti-cancer treatment. Cytotoxic agents, radiotherapy, that radiotherapy could be internal, such as radioimmunotherapy, or external, such as external beam radiotherapy. Uh, antibody drug conjugates are a potential another combination partner. But there are many others. Viruses are another one. Viruses that replicate preferentially in tumours. Some of these are already being used in clinical trials. I could drag up the phrase no gain without pain and I think uh, it's possible that some of the most durable results could be obtained uh, in patients uh, who have experienced toxicity, although the data aren't strong on that. Um, it's certainly a risk for patients who embark on this treatment and I think there is a, a highly important role for supportive care because if those symptoms are dealt with earlier, all practitioners, nurse practitioners, medical practitioners, that's the way we can control them to prevent them causing more morbidity while awaiting efficacy. It is not to be put off by what can be serious toxicities, it is to refer to centres where they've had a lot of experience in managing those toxicities and to learn as much as they possibly can, perhaps by in-service or preceptorships at centres that have had experience, so that they, as the uh, drugs become more widely marketed, they themselves could avail their useful patients.